Good evening. It is Ankar. It is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. My message may be getting old, but the reason I enjoy this message is because this meditation had you listening to the voice of God and had him tell you how special you are as an individual, that you have been created perfectly by him. He has created you perfectly and he told you so himself. And so you must have confidence in yourself. You must believe in yourself because all these things are true. You have unlimited power within your own being. You have the power to heal. You have the power to bless. You can find out any information that you need to know by simply asking yourself and then listening to the answers that come into your own head that you tell yourself or that spirit tells you. Your spirit, your joy guide, your doctor of philosophy, your Indian, your all your guides help you to know what you need to know, to give you guidance. You need only to ask in yourself. And if you have confidence in yourself and you ask these questions of yourself, you will always be able to find a solution for yourself. For you are blessed with the great intelligence of God. And while sometimes it does not seem that way, you make mistakes. You sometimes do things wrong. But these are the ways of learning. For when you do something wrong, you are also learning what is right when you come upon it. And the lesson is well known by that time. You will have understood it fully and you will be able to apply it whenever you need to in your future. And so I want you all to remember that you are manifestations of God on the planet Earth in the solar system of the sun. And you can create a wonderful life for yourself by using all the talents and the energy that you have already. And so remember this at this time and in this part of your life. Create the best that you can create. So, are there any questions for yeah. me? Yes, this is Charlotte. I'm yeah. going to jump right in. Yes, um, thank you. Okay. So, I just want to tell you, thank you. For, I, that meant so much to me, what you just said, because I'm feeling so apprehensive about this upcoming trip to Paris with my granddaughter. I'm leaving like the 27th of April for a week. And a week is a long time to spend in Paris, you know, one place. I remember going there with my husband when I was 30, and now my granddaughter is 30. And she's the same age as I was when I first went to Paris. And it's exciting and all, but I'm now 87, and I'm having trouble with my knee. And I do have a folding cane, and I will have a wheelchair. The airport, but I'm hoping that it's all going to work out because it's a long time to be you know, walking around a lot and sightseeing and stuff. And I just would like some reassurance that it's all going to work out okay. Well, you just I'll... told me you were going to have a wheelchair. Is that just for the trip? Or oh, no, it's just, for the it's just for the airport. No, no, I don't want to be in a wheelchair. No, I, I'm not that bad. I can walk. 
Uh, and that would be terrible for my grandeur. I, I wouldn't want that. But that's what I mean. I, I just want to be reassured that it's all going to work out, that I will have the strength and the health and the uh, energy to do it all. Well, of course you will. Because among <laughs> other things, you will be able to manage the amount of things that you do during the day. You will take time out to have lunch sit at a nice cafe and have some lunch and rest and relax while you eat and enjoy being in Paris. And then you may take public transportation or you may get yeah. whatever they there. They have these on and off buses. Yeah. I'm sorry? They have these on and off buses where you can get on a bus and go to different places and get off and then get on again. Yeah, I, I'm looking into that. So you will be able to do that. So you will be able to go to different places mm -hmm. and you will spend some time perhaps um, seeing a museum or a special exhibit and part way mm -hmm. through your afternoon, you will again take a rest. You will simply have be smart enough to rest your body and your niece will be aware that you need to rest your body. And so you will find that she will enjoy being at the cafes and places where you um, can rest. And you both can enjoy wonderful foods and seeing the sights of Paris. It will work out just fine for you. Thank you. you so I just not take in as much as you did when you were 30. <laughs> that yeah. will be fine with your niece. Mm -hmm. Well, she is aware that her aunt is 87 and cannot keep up with her amount of energy. And so all will work out well for you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure everyone here will be interested to hear about your trip. When you return. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I hope to see you all next Monday because I will be leaving soon after that. So I still have another, you know, oh. uh, week and a half to go. But I, I was just getting a little apprehensive, you know, as I'm planning things and wondering how I'm going to manage it all and, uh, and you know, putting what I need in a carry-on suitcase because we want to travel light and, uh, you know, making sure that I don't forget anything important and Stuff yes, like well, the um, you will do just fine. And if you can't quite go to everything that you wanted to go to, it doesn't matter. At the end of the world. Your niece mm -hmm. can come back another time, and you probably have already seen it. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much. You are most welcome. And if there's, yeah, there's time, I'll talk to you later about something else. But I want to give other people a chance. Okay. So thank, you. thank you. You are most welcome. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question. I Yeah, I, I, um, I started and then somebody else came in, but okay, this is Berta. Um, First, I wanted to acknowledge that um, since I uh, talked about my uh, knee and my leg um, several weeks ago, uh, it is recovered and doing great. And I just wanted to say thank you because, um, you know, I got some healing from, from you all. And I just wanted to say thank you. It's it's perfect. It just stopped, just stopped hurting me. So it's really great. And well, we, are, uh, we are glad to hear your good news. Yeah, thank you. Um, I do have a few questions. Um, yes. I was wondering if you could give me any insight or advice about moving. We are thinking about moving mm -hmm. and um, we haven't, you know, delved into it yet really, but uh, it is our plan. And I just wondered if there's anything 
that you can advise um, or see that you can help me with? Um, I, such a big question yeah. is really hard to answer. Right. You will be looking into wherever you wish to go. And that is most important. And how much um, money you have available for either rental or purchase of a house. So these are your main things to think about. Um, will you be buying a house? Where will you be going? And you can investigate the areas. My suggestion is that you take some time to go to whatever areas you are thinking about going. In other words, take a weekend and visit that spot if you can do so for a weekend via car. Just drive there. Um, look at the community, spend some time there. Just a weekend will help you know whether or not this is the right one for you. And don't stop with just one if you don't know, but try a couple um, over time. And this will give you the information that you need to make decisions. Do you understand? Yes, yes, thank you very much. That is, that is the best advice that I can give you to find the right place for you to move. Yes. And you yes. will know it by spending a little time there, perhaps two nights or three nights, and trying to um, walk the, find, find the, the, the spaces you will be using, um, perhaps check out churches to see what are there, what other events they have in the community, downtown area. You can see all these things on the website, but there is no, um, nothing better than experiencing it in person because the website cannot give you that feeling that you will get from being there. Mm -hmm. And you will know when you've found the right place for you. Yes, thank you. You are most welcome. Who else had a question? You see, two people began to speak at once, and now one will not even speak. I thought it was Elizabeth. That was me, Robert. Yeah, it is Elizabeth. I um I was wondering if you have in any insight to what's going on in the waters off of the shore of New Jersey with all the um dead dolphins and whales washed up on the shore. One moment, please. I'll see if I can uh, shed some light on it. I am not, uh, I am not sure, but no, I'm afraid I cannot help you with what's been going on off the shore. I cannot see if there is um, like construction work or exploratory work going on that would cause that. I am not seeing that at all at this time. The condition of the animals that have been washed up on shore would indicate that they, they are dying not too far out from shore, uh, as opposed to being a hundred or two hundred miles offshore. They are much. It is. They are have died closer, so I am not sure what's going on. 
um, I cannot find the source for you. I am sorry. Thank you. No problem. Um, are there other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, I've been waiting like two months for my face to heal. It's still not healed and I'm going crazy. And I need to know if you know if it's going to heal 100%, how much longer I have to wait. And if when I do get better, am I ever going to actually get better and love myself and be happy with myself? Well, oh, that answer is all up to you, isn't it? And I don't have to answer that question because you are the person in control of whether or not you love yourself. You need to enroll on a course of self-love affirmations. And it is as simple as saying, I love myself. I am perfect in every way. You heard that in the meditation tonight. You can follow those rules. I love myself. I am perfect in every way. And as for the healing of your skin, yes, but it takes time for the damage that you did to work its way out completely. It cannot be helped by a simple peel, uh, the, the application of some nutrients for short term. You have to give it time to really heal, which means leave it alone. Don't do anything. You may put on light makeup, particularly as your um, your method of working requires you to be wearing makeup. You can put it on so it appears good. Then you remove it and leave your face alone. You don't keep trying to treat it because you cannot bring an instant and an instant healing is what I am trying to say. You have to let it heal by itself. Putting something on your skin may help you heal it, but it will not be healed as soon as you remove that which you have just put upon your skin. It has only been able to spend some time on the top surface where we and you and the healing needs to start several layers below the surface. And the time to allow that skin to grow up to the surface. Does that make sense? Yes. Skin growth believe, be, begins below the surface by approximately three to four layers cells. And the top cells should be allowed to, to reside there. Do not try to remove them, hoping that you will see a clearer, more perfect complexion at the next level down after you have removed the top. You need to let it come to the surface on its own. So you wear makeup when you need to for your work and you remove it and you can moisturize and you just leave your face alone. And in about a month, you will begin to see that there is a difference. It may take a little longer, but there is a difference. And you will be happy with that. And as for loving yourself, say before you go to bed, I love myself in every way. I am perfect in every way. And repeat that at least 20 times before you go to sleep. That you will then be able to be talking to your subconscious mind 
that you love yourself and that you are perfect in every way. And by saying that as you drift off to sleep, you will begin to make a difference in how you are feeling about yourself. And it may it will probably take only two to three weeks if you do this every night, you make a point to do it every night. As you fall asleep, I love myself. I am perfect in every way. I love myself. I am perfect in every way. I love myself. I am perfect in every way. And you will begin to fall asleep while you are saying this. And that is okay if you fall asleep saying your affirmations, but make it a practice every night. You want to say that. And you will feel slightly different in only two to three weeks. It does not take a lot. It is not a miracle. It is merely refining your opinion of yourself to your subconscious mind. Now, to a certain extent, you have had a history of other people um, being mean to you and saying not nice things. So you need to continue this for a very long time to make sure you totally overcome the messages that were given to you at that time by people who yep. were treating you badly. But you will overcome it. And you will learn to realize that what they were saying about you was truly what they were saying about themselves. Because they saw you through the veil of their own eyes. And what people, when people are critical of other people, the things that they are most critical about are things that they themselves have. So if they said you weren't pretty, they thought they weren't pretty. If they said you couldn't do something, it was because they couldn't do something. And you have to overcome these things in the, from the past by giving yourself the, I have confidence in myself and my abilities. You can say that. I love myself and I am pretty. I have confidence in myself and my abilities. I love myself. I am perfect in every way. Say good things about yourself constantly. You will find after you have done this exercise for two to three weeks that these sentences pop into your mind spontaneously. They are signs that you are being successful in re-educating your subconscious mind to get a better picture of yourself, one in which you are. You have confidence in yourself, one in which you have confidence in your abilities, one in which you um, think, can think um, good things about yourself. I hope that is helpful. Please remember to say what you, those kind words to yourself. I will. Thank you so much. Every night I do the one for Brahms. Yes, that is good. He has 14 more days of observation. Obviously, he is in perfect health. Yes, and their birthday parties Friday and Saturday coming up. That is very nice. I'm sure you will enjoy. Oh, and update. I took the squirrel to um, the wildlife um, rehabilitation center. And the lady is going to raise him with uh, the other baby squirrels. Perfect. I kept her here for two days, but then I realized since they're not legal in my state, there's no vet in case I had to take her to the doctor. So then I decided to 
find a safe place where they could take care of her. That is good. You did the right thing. Yes. Are there anyone else have any questions? Well, if no one is speaking out, I would like yeah, to. I have a question. Um, my dog just came in and she's she's a baby, maybe about two years old. And she is a lovely dog, but she is scared of everything. And we adopted her, so we don't know what happened in her past. But um, she gives the appearance of being strong and vicious. She's always barking at people, but she's just scared. Um, is there anything that you can tell me about that, about, uh, about her or how I can help her? Well, uh, you are doing the best that you can for her simply by loving her and uh, comforting her when she is anxious and is barking um, at people because she is frightened. You can calm her down and do the best you can there. But the general, you are simply um, loving her and giving her time. She will improve over time. Being in a new situation, she'll begin to see that there is nothing to be to fear and be afraid of in your location, in your house, yeah. in your home. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And Charlotte? Yes. Okay. The reason I want to speak to you now is because my son, Danny, who is with me, is away until tomorrow. He'll be home tomorrow. And I'm really concerned because he's been with me for quite a while and he hasn't made any moves to do anything more with his life. And my daughters are very upset with me thinking that I'm enabling him because he is a 60, oh my gosh, he's 62 years old. I mean, he's old enough to be a grandfather and he's got these two little kids in Texas that are uh, going to be five and two. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen, but my house right now is kind of deteriorating because he's kind of taken over and they think he's going to want to stay there here permanently, have this home as his base, and they don't think it's fair. And like Berta, I'm also wanting to move, but I don't know where. I, do, I have to do my research, but there has to be a time where I may have to move from this house, which is getting to be a bit much for me. But here my son thinks him being with me is helpful. And there are times when he can be helpful, but it, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, he- Well, then you, you need- you need to tell him that I want to get on with his life. Yes, but that's not what you need to tell him. You need to tell him that you need to get on with your life and mm -hmm. that this house is no longer the place you want to stay. You want to be in a new place. You do some research and look for assisted living facilities, which will give you an independent apartment on your own. And when you find something like that, or you tell him that you are looking for something like that, and that he needs to figure out what he is doing in his life, because he will not be able to stay in the home. You are going to sell your house as soon as you can. It's not going to be easy, because um, another thing that I've realized is that he has gambling tendencies and it runs on both sides of the family. My father was a gambler and my husband's brother was a gambler where they wound up having very little at the end of their life because they just didn't know how to, to handle money and they they took chances that, you know, they say it's an addiction. It's like an addiction like alcohol and drugs. Yes, I, un I understand what you want. And he's saying. taking advantage of me financially also, which my daughters resent that he's yes, taking. I understand. 
That's why you have to begin looking for some place for you to live. And that some place will be in an assisted living facility where you can have your own apartment and live your own life. And if you want to have meals, they will provide meals for you. If you want to cook for yourself, you can cook for yourself. You find one which will allow you to live independently the way you want to live your life. And then as you are finding something, you simply tell him that you will be moving and you will be selling this house. And he needs to, he will not be able to stay. That is what you do. Do not say what he needs to do. Just tell him that he cannot stay in your home, that you will be selling it. That once you find some place to live, I hope that you can afford to move into the new house, taking just what you want. And then you can hire someone to clean out your house. Oh, that's a major undertaking, yeah. Yes, but you don't have to do it. You just take the things that you want the most with you to your new location. This is what you need to do. It is as simple as that, or else he will continue to live with you because it is easy. And if he's a gambler, that is all the worse, all the, the more bad it is to allow him to stay with you. Oh dear, yeah, it's, it's hard. I know it's kind of called tough love and stuff. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of got wind that the, my daughters are upset with him. And he said, don't worry, I'm not going to take away their inheritance. In other words, you know, he wanted to uh, assure them that he's, uh, you know, the house is going to be divided equally among them if I, you know, when it's sold. But he kind of thinks he could put it off until who knows when. And um, I know he's not you thinking are dead? Me. Yeah, I know that's a thing. <laughs> and I'm not ready for that. I mean, I, you know, I want to go on for another 10 years and uh, I don't want this to, to drag me down and make me, you know, more depressed about that is why you need to find someplace else. And you simply tell mm -hmm. him that you will be moving as soon as you find someplace else. Mm -hmm. And that he will not be allowed to stay. Right. It's going to be difficult. And yeah, thank you. But I it know. It will be difficult. There is no question about that. It will be difficult. But Content yourself by looking to the place for the place that you want to move to after your trip to Paris. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your You're welcome. Advice. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question. I have a question. Yes. I was wondering, I hear a lot of talk about chakras and the energy fields. How does one know if their chakras are not in alignment? And what do you do about that? And an interesting question. How do you know if there is something wrong? Usually, um, if your chakras are not in alignment, we will put it that way. Your chakra, chakras cannot be out of alignment since they are in line in your body. And so they cannot move to the side like a chiropractor can adjust your spine. Um, it's not alignment. But when you are talking about um, are all the chakras working per perfectly and what you're doing is working perfectly? If there is something wrong in your life that you are not fixing, that is probably an indication that you are not, you have a chakra that is unbalanced. If you cannot speak to some people and tell them what you are thinking and what's on your mind and speak truthfully. And you always have to keep your mouth shut and you cannot talk to people. 
that is an indication that your sixth chakra is not working properly. And you can, that is how you can tell. If you are always in pain in your heart, that people disappoint you, that you are unhappy all the time, this can be an indication that your heart chakra is not working properly because you are continually in pain. So you look to your life and see what aspect of your life is always out of kilter. Are you warring with your neighbors? Then perhaps your root chakra is not working properly. If you're always at odds with your neighbors and having and, and family members, and you don't get along well with people, well, that can be a root chakra problem. And if always just go up for the next one in your, your second chakra, if if you um, are not making progress and figuring it out and making your life bigger, better, it's possible that that chakra is out of alignment, as, as they would say, that it is not working properly. So this is how you tell. You look and see what area of your life that a chakra governs. And if everything is working fine in that area of your life, then clearly you are fine. And you do not have to worry about getting your chakras in line. Um, and that is the way you really can see. And hopefully the information that you are being given is sufficient so that you can recognize the different areas of your life that are governed by the different chakras. Do you understand? Yes, yes, I do. So do you think it's necessary for people to get Reiki treatments just to get them? Or is there a benefit to them if they're not out of alignment? Um, I'm sorry, I don't I'm, I'm sorry, know. I don't know which, which treatments you're which referring treatments to. You're Somebody had sent someone about Reiki. It's like a mess, it's like, you know. A Reiki healing. Yes, yes, that would be it. Um, um, you you could you, get you could get yourself yes, yes. Yourself. you could get yourself a reiki treatment if you wished you do not need to do anything that you do not want to do so there are many um, healers many of them educated in reiki at the church and so. A normal healing session that is available at the church probably would be able to work just as well. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Are there other questions? Carol M, do you have uh, your hand up for a question? I do, I do, I do. Oh. Um, what I'm... I'm just sort of, I mean, you know, lots of things are going on, challenge, dent, dental challenges that seem to get better and then go backwards and a lot of different things in life that are hard and can be disappointing because I'll start to feel good. And like when I feel better in my mouth, my thinking gets clearer and then something will happen to turn it around again. So life has a lot of um, challenges. Stops, for you. Yeah, a lot of challenges and they affect my ability to be grounded and really to think cognitively, clearly and creatively. They affect it pretty adversely, um, quite adversely. And, and then there's a certain amount of um, just stress, shock together, stress and shock. Like when a, when a bad thing happens, I sort, of, I sort of go into shock again and this sort of perpetual stress and massive financial stress. So a lot of stuff. And yet, even in the midst of this, I have to find a way to be present, to get divine inspiration, to guide me on choices when it, you know, I can be in places where I don't think I have any choices, but 
but I know they do exist. If I could be clear enough, receptive enough, something enough. So really the nature of my question is in the face of these so many things that make it hard for me to think clearly, let alone be receptive or of to inspiration or energetic or whatever, um, I would like any sort of um, guidances, insights you could share um, to help me in this, if you understand. Yes, I understand your question. So what you are saying is that these are not all health challenges or, or are they all health challenges? No, the health challenges, no. The health challenges affect my ability to think clearly. So, okay. so they, go to, they go together. And when I can start to feel better, I think, oh my God, this is great, I'm getting better. And then there's a setback. You know, it puts me back into pain or heart difficulty thinking clearly because it's very hard to think well when you're in pain. Um, but it's, it is physiological. It also feels like sort of mental, emotional, deep fatigue, which sometimes because of the high level of stress or me just saying, I don't know how to solve this, God. I really, I've, I've worked really hard in the past to hold things together, but I, right now my, I'm tired mentally and physically. And I feel like that song from Jesus Christ Superstar. Now I'm sad and tired, um, but um, anyway. But first I still, of all, first of I, all, I'm go, I am going to suggest to you that you begin a regular, if, if, if you do not have a regular meditation schedule for yourself, that the easiest way and the best way and the fastest way is to have a regular meditation schedule. And I put it that way because you can choose what time of day or when you will do your meditating, but it must be regular. And I would suggest that it would be in the morning before you do much of anything, that you get up and either you brush your teeth, you take a shower if you wish, you get yourself dressed, and then you find your favorite chair, your favorite corner, wherever you would like to sit, and you begin to meditate. And only do it for 20 minutes. Do not make a big thing of this. 20 minutes is plenty long enough for it to bring about that peaceful time in your life that you need. Now, if you like, as part of this practice. If you find an uplifting book or one that is helpful to you in some way, shape or form about the saints, perhaps how various saints have overcome the difficulties in their life, then it is sometimes good to have a book to study. And you can spend five minutes reading your book or 10 minutes and then think about it for five minutes and then move into the meditation. Now, most people say that I can't meditate. And the problem is that everybody thinks they can't meditate because they have an unreal expectation of meditation. And meditation is not this quiet, my mind is not thinking anything type of thing that most people think is meditation. It is any controlled thought so that you can choose to have um, statements similar to the ones that were suggested to the other young lady who uh, asked about how she could love herself more, you can choose to make up a set of statements that you will think about, that you will read um, during your meditation. So your meditation could be simply reading these statements. I am happy. I am peaceful. My life is good giving yourself the 
the calming statements that you need to hear in every day. And if you do this for approximately 10 minutes a day, on top of reading or 20 minutes a day, that this will begin to give you the quiet time that you are craving in your life. After your 20 minutes, you can get up and you can go to whatever you need to do in your house, as far as your housework, your breakfast, your um, whatever you think that you need to do. You can make an effort to do that and not be worried about whether you are successful at doing this, that you are accomplishing anything. This is not your primary thing. It's to make the effort, whatever it happens to be, to spend 20 minutes in meditation saying whatever you write up for yourself and just reading that over and over and over again. And if you start thinking about something else, which is most natural, go back to, to what you are reading and just go on and say, oh, no, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm meditating. I am doing my affirmations. And so you do your affirmations. Now, you can also, if you don't want to do affirmations, although I highly recommend affirmations, you can just count your breaths. Breathe in, that's one. Breathe out, that's two. Or breathe in again, or three. Breathe out, or four. You can keep counting. You can count one, two, one, two. It's not how many you do before you uh, fall asleep or you get distracted, none of that counts. It's just that you keep trying to do it. And the longer you keep trying to do it, and I am talking over days, weeks, months, years, the better you will get. And it will become an important time for you in the time. Because it is the time that you are putting aside to feel calm and peaceful. Because all you are going to think about is your affirmations or your breathing. There are other things you can do if you wish. But the, they are just variations of those two basic things. And so that is what I would recommend. You yeah. see, the quiet time that you need and you seek can be gained that way. And you can always then, when need be, if you are going into a pain episode, say, I need to meditate. I am, to avoid this pain, I need to meditate. And so then you sit down and you meditate at that time. And then your affirmations are different. Then that I am calm. I am happy. I am good. I am successful. I am free. I am calm. I am happy. I am well. My body is well. Every cell and fiber of my being is the perfect expression of God's design working perfectly in every way. And so you say these things because you are having pain and you need to release the pain. You try not to say anything such as the pain is gone. No, don't say that. You don't want to mention pain. You just want to feel well. I feel great. I feel happy. You only make positive statements as to your health when you are going into a difficult health. And you do that through any problem in your life. 
I am, I just, meditation is going to be your friend if you remember these tips. What about during the day when I'm easily derailed or just check out, just sort of mentally, emotionally check out, but, or I'm just, I know I need to solve a problem, but I really don't know what to do. And I want divine inspiration. Yes. Um, I'm sort of. and meditate. I am looking for the solution. The solution lies within me. I am a font of solutions. I am filled with solutions for my problems. But don't even say the problems. I am filled with solutions. And I find the right thoughts and the right techniques which guide me to the right solutions. In the middle of the day, if you need to, meditate on the subject that you need to be, um, you need to deal with at that time. That is how you are going to um, overcome this. Because what is happening now is you're saying, oh my God, I can't think. I can't stay focused. I am scattered. And you're making negative thoughts around finding the solutions. And so it is even harder than it would be. I am calm. I am collected. Solutions come to me quickly and easily. I easily think of what I need to do next. I am organized. I am perfect. Only spend five minutes in meditation in the middle of your day when you cannot Think for what you need to do. Spend five minutes making affirmations saying that you can do what you need to do. Probably not the answer you were hoping for. No, 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 that's actually fine. I, I like, like with my meditation, which isn't very good right now because I get so um, short attention span, but, uh, but I really like to make it a combination, which is why it's nice to read about saints. I really like to make it a combination of prayer and meditation because it's hard for me to do affirmations without including God because I, I just need that, like, dear God, thank you that I am this or that I am that. I have to, I have to include God in it. Yes, that is fine. And make sure when anything that follows the words I am is positive about oh, yes. yourself. Yeah, not, I, just, I am worried. Do not say that. Oh, not I am scattered. Do not say that. I am calm. I am collected. I just like to. What's a really nice way to include God? Because the positive affirmations sometimes say, even though you're you're speaking in the I am as as at one with God. I, I'm so uncomfortable if I'm just doing new thought stuff without prayerly God stuff. I really need them together for me to be at ease with them. Okay. How about you? I know that God gives me the answers that I need. Or thank you, God, for. Yeah. Thank you, God, for the answers. Thank yeah. you, God, for giving me this wonderful life. You yeah. can thank you, God, for everything that you wish to come into your life. Just make sure that you state this in a positive way. No mentioning of the problem or difficulty. Absolutely not allowed. You must only thank God for what is good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You can, you can do this and allow yourself. You, you did say, because my meditation, because how did you put it? Your attention span is bad. That is normal. That is not bad. Well, I've, I've meditated in earlier years with substantially more equanimity. Um, so I, I'm contrasting myself with myself. Well, <clears throat> You're contrasting yourself with yourself. And it doesn't matter. You've still given it a negative connotation. 
You're not what you used to be. Well, none of us are the same as we were five years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. So do not worry about that. Today is all you have. And today you simply meditate. You choose your form of meditation and you try to keep it up for 20 minutes. And in the meantime, your mind will become distracted. You will think about, oh, I better put this on my shopping list. You will think about, oh, I still haven't solved this problem. You will think about other things constantly while you are trying to meditate. This is not a bad thing. It is a normal thing. You just need to take your mind back to what you decided you're meditating on and start over. And you may have to do that many times before you finish your 20 minutes. And that is okay. That is normal. And because once upon a time, you had the willpower, the ability to sit in quiet contemplation and meditation for 20 minutes nearly effortlessly, it does not matter that it does not come to you that way now. You are dealing with what you have now, not what you used to have, and you don't think about what you used to have. You just think about the progress you are making now and how good things are coming to you. We have a deal, yes? Yes, yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there other questions? Okay, uh, you were saying in, uh, in uh, your little speech in the beginning there that we are so powerful yes. that we can do anything in a sense. Uh, yeah. and, and I- You will be you know, hard I, to fly like a bird. Well, that would be fun. <laughs> yes, it would be. You have to do that in your imagination. Oh, so I can't do that. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I, I actually it. thought about it because I thought, well, if I can do anything, why not? <laughs> Finish your question. Okay. Um, I was thinking that I know that we can like control or not control, but um, change our thinking, our mind or our attitude. We can change actions that we do and we can change how we feel and, and get some regulation on our some of our emotions i was wondering though is it possible for us to be able to not feel now i don't want to i don't mean this and not feel pain at all because you know if you stub your toe you're going to feel some pain i was thinking more along the lines of if there's pain and they're in pain is it possible for them to do you have the power to not feel that pain while you're going through that? Or or do you have to rely on the drugs and et cetera, et cetera? In other words, is there any way you could actually do that yourself? Yes. Oh, really? Cool. Have you ever heard of self-hypnosis? Oh, yes. I hadn't thought can, of that. You can hypnotize yourself to be free of pain. But ah. even the hypnotist will tell you that you cannot put it that way, but that you will be experiencing. I don't know, know quite how they will say it, but they are experienced at it. Oh, I see. And, and so find yourself a hypnotist that will teach you, and most of them are happy to do this, will teach you how to put yourself into a hypnotic state and give yourself the suggestions that you need to be free of pain. Say you had cancer and you could not uh, get enough pain-killing drugs. To or you don't want to take pain-killing things, you know, the, the drugs, because they do other things. Or you don't like them. So yeah. you could uh, ask him how to, um, ask someone how to, to teach you how you can hypnotize yourself and what suggestions 
you need to give yourself so that you do not and will never need to take pain-killing drugs, say, at the dentist. Mm -hmm. I, I actually know a hypnotist who did that at the dentist. <laughs> yes, and, and many women have been hypnotized so they experience no pain for childbirth. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, but you will need the aid of the hypnotist who can okay. teach you how to do that. And that is the most practical, easy way. You might be able to work it out yourself, but I think it probably would be faster to see someone who already specializes in hypnosis. Okay. All righty. Thank you. You are most welcome. Are there any more questions? I have, I have one more question. This is Berta. Yes. Um, I was looking for um, a suggestion. Um, sometimes um, I lose motivation to help myself. Like, for example, I know if I go swimming, I'm going to feel better afterwards, but I can't get myself to go and do it. Do you have um, something that could help me with that? Yeah, do it anyway. Mm. It will take me a moment to see what I can come up with. The easiest way is to simply tell yourself to get up and do it. Enough. It has nothing to do that you will feel better later, but you need to do it now so that you can experience that feeling good. So to, to do the actions that you need to do usually just requires some self-discipline. And you can try a lot, is what I would suggest. That that works the best. Yeah. Um, but give me a moment. Mm -hmm. Well, I am full of making people or suggesting that people use affirmations. And so to make an affirmation that uh, you enjoy swimming and you can't wait to go swimming every day if that is what you want to do. So that you find these things that you find difficult, you take the things that you find difficult to motivate yourself to do and begin to make statements on how much you enjoy these things. And you, the best time to make these statements is before you go to sleep at night, because that is a way to reprogram yourself, um, you, your Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. So it, it's easy that way. Use the try to say something 20 times before you fall asleep. And mm -hmm. it will be normal to fall asleep while you are saying these things. So you do not worry that you have to wake up and finish your 20 times. And you can keep track on your fingers. You press down your pinky finger and then you're ring finger and then your middle finger and your first pinky finger and your thumb or start with your thumb and go in the other direction and you keep count twice on each hand and that's it and that will give you your 20 and you say I enjoy my swimming every day I enjoy my walk whatever it is you need to convince yourself that you want to do and that will help your motivation because now, instead of it being a chore, it is something that you like to do. And it will take um, a, perhaps two weeks or so before it really takes effect. And you begin to find it a lot easier to just do what it is you should do. Great. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. And our time is now up.
And I thank you all for having a nice selection of questions. I hope you have enjoyed. I uh, hope the answers have been helpful for you. For those who ask questions, for those who didn't ask questions, perhaps come again and uh, ask questions. And um, uh, I will say good night. I give you all my blessings. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I am back. I am back. Hi, so it's Hi, it's so one. It's one. And, and I just wanted to tell you all that. All that. I love you all. I love you all. And love you. I will see you again. See you. Wait for the medium. Wait for the medium. Say good night. <laughs>